Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And I'm back with another Pandora video. So today we are on a kind of tangent. So I am getting ready to go on a trip. Mom and I are going on a month long cruise to Singapore, Vietnam. Uh, we're gonna hit New York and Los Angeles because we're going out of New York and back into Los Angeles. Um, but we're going to all these amazing Asian ports overseas on our cruise. And when we go on these long trips, you know, we've been to Europe, we've been to Australia. We like to go to as many Australia uh, Pandora shops, as many European Pandora shops as possible on our trip to get those exclusive charms. But when we are on a ship, it is sometimes hard to Google where the stores are and to know which exclusive charms are going to be available when we get there. So I do like to do a bit of research before we go. That way I have a general idea of what charms are available where, what stores we can go to at which ports, and what I'm going to be looking for to add to my bracelets because I don't want to spend all my money on the first stop at the first port when there's a charm I like way better at the second port. Now, it's not foolproof because with exclusives, they're not always available to see online. Um, somebody else might not have made a travel video about that port. So I do always have to go to these ports with a grain of salt, knowing if I see a charm I like way better than one on my list, I'm gonna get that one and be flexible to change as the uh, trip changes or as the itinerary changes to get a charm that fits that place better. Like when we went to Turkey, we were in Istanbul and they did have a beautiful exclusive charm. I will put a picture of it up here, but it was for a city that we weren't going to on our trip. It had hot air balloons on it, which were gorgeous, but we weren't going hot air ballooning. We did, however, walk around the markets and go to several Turkish rug shops where we saw how they made the Turkish rugs. We also have a Turkish rug at home that my grandparents saved up special to purchase when they went to Turkey. It's been in their living room my entire life. Um, and so I ended up purchasing the Turkish rug charm, the flying carpet from Alaska when we were in Turkey, although that's not necessarily an exclusive charm. And I really struggled. Do I buy this fancy hot air balloon charm or do I buy this one that I could buy back home, um, but it was a little cheaper? taxes and prices are different in every country and every port for every charm. Um, so I did do some quick on the spot research, found that I could get this charm cheaper in Turkey and it had more sentimental value to me. Hey there, buttercup. Than the actual exclusive did from Turkey. I also then picked up a camel later on. So, you know, but keeping a list, like I'm going to show you, I do a list on my computer of kind of what charms are available, how they might look on my bracelet, helps me to decide which one I might want more. And at the end of the day, it just makes it a lot easier when you're in port, if you're on say a excursion, say when we were in Italy and I went to Pompeii, we had about 30 minutes of free time at Pompeii. And there was a Pandora store 10 minutes away. So if I use all my free time to walk to the Pandora store and back, I now have a minimum of 10 minutes in the store. And that's not counting if there's a line at the store or if I wanna use the bathroom, buy some water, do any other shopping. So sometimes, obviously that's not ideal and you prefer to have way more shopping time, way more free time. Um, but sometimes you have very limited free time in a Pandora store. If you can go in and say, I want this charm, do you have it? It makes life a little simpler. Right, Buttercup? Right. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, I'm going to open up my uh, Illustrator. I use Adobe Illustrator to show you how I keep track of not only what is currently on my travel bracelets, but I will show you how I keep track of what I may want. I have kind of a wish list for cities that I'm going to, cities I've been in. I have records of which charms I bought in which cities on my previous trips. And I have kind of mock-up of my bracelets so I can see, oh, if I want this charm, do I have a place for it on my bracelets or is it not even gonna fit what I'm looking for and maybe a different charm would be a better pick. Um, so let's take a look. 
All right, before we head into Illustrator, I just wanted to show you where I currently stand with my cruise and travel bracelets. So I have my main bracelet here. There's that little Aladdin flying carpet. And you can see all my main travel charms that I've collected from Europe. And then I have my newest one. This is the Las Vegas exclusive bracelet. It says travel on one side. Um, and I am still working on this design, but you can see I've added a lot of my more uh, button charms and animals to this recent purchase. And I do want to stack these. Now, Singapore has more gold. And you can see I have already purchased from Facebook and from recent collections, a few uh, gold or Asian charms along with this little Korea doll. We will talk about that. Well, I do wanna get most of my charms in Singapore or in the location. Sometimes I wanna get some of the ones that are available here because they are a better price. Um, and then I also have a cruise bracelet, which has more Caribbean kind of ports. Um, I probably won't be adding to that this trip Either my Singapore charms will go onto this bracelet if it works together, or I do have this bracelet, which you can see is a silver version of my rose gold travel bracelet. I may end up, you know, putting one or two of the more pink or silver charms on these bracelets and doing a gold design. It's all going to depend on what we find in Singapore. So now let's head into Illustrator. I'll buckle up because while this is not my biggest file, this is my travel uh, illustrator file document. So we have several areas that I have it broken down into. Up here at the top, we have all of the pieces for my cruise bracelet. Then here in the middle, we have, you can see written out the larger cruises that I have taken uh, in the past. This was the first one, second one, we just did three to Australia, and now we are going to Singapore, Asia, this whole area. So I like to just keep the list here. Not only does it help me to research which charms might be available in that area, um, but it also just helps me once I purchase the charms on my trip to assign which charm did I buy in each area. So you can see that right up here for this entire trip, we have it laid out. These are the charms that I purchased in each place and what they mean to me. Um, I bought, you know, Big Ben in London. We bought the Little Mermaid in Copenhagen. We bought the Germany Heart in Berlin. We bought this triple dangle of the rose gold pieces. Uh, it has the little uh, flag, not flag, plane, globe, and suitcase in Estonia. The reindeer in Finland. The uh, castle was for Germany because we went to the Schwerin uh, castle and they did not have a specific castle so I did get this Disney castle instead. And then we went to Sweden and I got the little heart. This has the red Swedish horse on the back for Le Havre France. Uh, I did get a few charms. The cherry blossom represents our trip to Giverny which I was very excited about. Then the Arc de Triomphe and the Cathedral cathedral here. I have been to France probably the most of any country because I love France. I have studied French for many years um, and I was very excited to add these to my collection. Then we went to La Corona, Spain and I got this little triple dangle. I love the triples. They're so pretty. Uh, Lisbon, Portugal, Spain. I'm not going to go through every single charm for every single bracelet, but you get the idea. Now, the only thing I want to point out here is that I do have this transparent uh, square over Cartagena in Spain, and that's because this charm is actually the Magnus charm from Tangled. I think Magnus is the right name. Um, but when we were in Cartagena, Spain, we went to a horse breeding farm, 
It was amazing to see the horses and they were running and they were gorgeous and magnificent. And this little charm looks so much like the horses that they breed and I want it, but it is obviously not a charm I could purchase in Spain. Um, and it is actually retired now. So the overlay here signifies that I do not have this charm. I want this charm. And if and when I find this charm, it will go on my bracelet with the rest of my collection from this trip. Then you can see I have, you know, some cruises that we've been on and where I picked up charms from those places. Uh, the little boxes here show this is all one cruise. This was all one cruise. Now coming up, I did get this charm in Australia. Um, these I am hoping to get when we go to Japan, Singapore, and I do have a trip where we're supposed to be going to Barcelona. So these are for specific places. They will go in a cruise box with any other terms I get on that cruise when and if the time comes. So then we have this. Now within Adobe Illustrator, this white box is actually the only thing on a page. This white box is a page. So if I were to print this document, this white box is the only thing that would print. Now, since I'm using this digitally, that doesn't matter. The rest of this is just off the screen. Um, so this boundary here, of course, you can make multiple pages. This is just how my brain works. If your brain likes pages, make more pages. Or if you're in Canva, they will all be pages. Um, so these are just charms that I like that I would like to pick up, not necessarily on a specific trip. Um, if I am going on a specific trip, like you can see right now, Singapore, Chinese Lion, the Asian rickshaw, Malaysia, the Philippines, Japan. If I'm going on a trip, I will do research as to which charms are available in those countries, and they will all go on this white square. So all of these are potential charms that I could pick up anywhere in my travels that I liked. If I don't like it, it doesn't go on this board. Um, so right now I have, I have no, no trips at all ever to Russia. I was supposed to go to Russia, but it was a canceled portion of uh, this trip. We were supposed to go to Russia in this trip. We didn't. That's fine. In the future, we may go to Russia. I have no plans to go to Holland and no trips that even go near it, but I love this little windmill and I want to get it if I ever go to Holland. Um, so if I see a charm like the uh, Brandenburg Gate from Berlin um, that I know I want, I would like some of these Scottish and Ireland charms if I ever go there. It just goes on this master kind of wish list. And then if I need to start doing research, I have a place to start and to expand my search. This charm, irrelevant to y'all, but I know I own this charm. It's on my pink travel bracelet, which is on a completely separate document. Uh, so I'm going to have to update that because it shouldn't be here anymore since I've purchased it. But that's irrelevant. All right, we're going to skip this section and we'll come back to it at the very end. But for now, I'm just going to show you right over here. When I started doing research for my Singapore or my Asian bracelet, I did a search um, similar here. This picture I found when I started researching just travel documents, travel documents, travel charm bracelets, and I liked how it looked, the combination of the dangles and the beads and just the overall vibe. And so this is just a picture from either Instagram or Pinterest. If this is yours, I am not trying to steal it. I give you full credit, but I saved this quite a long time ago. I don't know where it's from and I never thought I'd be sharing this online. Uh, similarly, these are mostly from Instagram. So this one was another one that I liked. Uh, some of these more uh, generic travel charms, not exclusives. And so I saved this. This is kind of like a mood board of these are kind of the look that I'm going for. So especially these three, um, I really liked for Singapore. And you can see that these Asian charms have a lot of red. They also typically have a lot of gold and none of these have any gold. 
Um, you can see all the little dolls. There are a lot of adorable Japanese, Korean, uh, Chinese dolls available in Asia. I love them. I want them all, but I'm probably not going to find them all because I do believe some of them are retired. So while I'm not going to ever um, probably recreate a charm bracelet exactly, this is just pictures for inspiration, kind of the vibe I'm going to. And when I start laying out my bracelets, having these pictures kind of helps me think uh, if, if, you know, I picked up two charms that I really like, what else might I be able to search for that would go with those charms um, and help me go in the right direction? So then at the bottom, this is the main place that I work and play. So we have right here, this is my main travel bracelet, the one that is on my rose gold open heart charm bracelet. And you can see that it has every single charm laid out in the exact spots that are on that bracelet. This is my Estonia charm, the triple uh, rose gold dangle. I wear this on an O-ring, so I keep that up here. And then this, my Santorini charm, is not Pandora. It is my only charm in this collection that is not Pandora. I typically don't collect things that aren't Pandora just because I don't want to void my warranty. Um, but look at that with the blue roofs and the blue background and the it's just so pretty. I bought this in Santorini and I wear it on my Pandora Me uh, heart bracelet, the one with the pearls, and I love it. And so I stack that on top of this longer bracelet. Then we have our new travel bracelet down here that is currently a work in progress. And you can see I have started to lay out some of the Singapore charms that I already have. So I have this gold cat, this uh, gold twirly dragon, and this, uh, the picks you. I know I'm saying that wrong, but it is the lion statue. So in an ideal world, I love how this looks. I really liked how she used these cherry blossom, um, peach blossoms. I always call them cherry blossoms, but they're peach blossoms. Uh, charms. I actually have the entire peach blossom collection except for these small Muranos. And so they are an Asian exclusive. If I could pick up a set of them for this bracelet, I think that would really help to tie in the rose gold while still being the same colors as a lot of the other bracelets um, or charms on this bracelet. I also really liked these two girls the best because they have a bit of the pink or the teal um, that would match my other bracelets. This charm is just gorgeous and I have to have it. This one I like, but it is not necessarily an Asian exclusive. My mom has this one already. You can get it in the States as well as this one you can get in the States. The Koi Flesh, I believe you can get in the States, but you can buy it in Asia as well. So in an ideal world, while I already own one, two, three charms, I would like to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight charms to kind of make up the basis of this bracelet, as well as the Singapore mermaid lion. I know he has a name, but I can't remember it. And the Japanese little Akita dog. I've also placed these two dolls over to the side because this is the one I already have picked up. I got it from a friend who sells travel exclusives on Facebook Marketplace, and I just like this little blue doll. But I've placed them off to the side because I'm not sure they really fit the aesthetic of what I'm doing right here. Um, and if I don't find the blue doll, if I just have the pink one, she could easily go on this bracelet, especially if I don't find either of these two dolls. Or she could easily be tucked into one of the many dangles up here on this bracelet. She could go down here tucked into this bracelet. I only have one dangle here so far. Um, but if I 
if I don't find this one for her to go opposite, they could easily go somewhere on this bracelet. So at the end of the day, let me grab that box. I like to take this black box and put it over the charms that I don't have because that makes it really easy to see, you know, which charms I have versus which charms I would want. I also will typically um, do a design with just the charms I already own. But in this case, I only own three of these charms because I, while I like to save money and I don't mind getting charms ahead of time, I got these when the store was closing, a uh, store was closing near me and this one was a new release that I just had to have. <laughs> I typically will not buy charms in advance. The whole point of travel exclusives to me is that they're exclusive and I bought them in that country. So this is a lot of research for charms that I I don't want to buy ahead of time. I want to buy these in Singapore, in China, in Japan, in Vietnam. Um, likewise, you know, I, I could probably find this little guy on a Facebook group since I am in several exclusive groups, not exclusive to the community, but like travel exclusive charms. Um, I could probably find this guy as well. I don't want to. I want to wait and buy them on my trip in these places, um, but they could easily go on this existing bracelet. If I don't find any of these pieces, these could be incorporated into a small design. I don't think they really go with my other bracelets as well as these do. These could tuck into an existing bracelet. So we'll see, but that is typically how I do research for a design. And if I am able to create this entire design here, it will be worn probably stacked with these other two. Right now I wear this bracelet and this bracelet typically stacked with my Pandora Me bracelet and my O design. And that is why this is kind of uh, arranged as a stack because that's how I would wear it as opposed to my cruise bracelet up here is separate because this is worn separately. And so this is typically how a bracelet will look. It's a much smaller area because it's only one bracelet. So this was a bit of inspiration. I really liked how this looked. I still really want this charm, but it is retired. I have not found her yet. Um, but this is how my cruise bracelet currently looks. And these were all charms that I really like. And if I find a good price on them, I would add to this bracelet. This is not a Pandora charm. I think that's a Chino's charm. I'm not sure I would add it to this bracelet, but I've placed it here because I love it. And I might wear that one on a, a bracelet all its own because I just think it's beautiful. So this is typically how um, these little uh, Adobe Illustrator designs work is I'll have my actual bracelet laid out. I'll have some inspiration on what I would like to have and then a little inspiration. My master sheet will take, you know, the existing bracelet, this existing bracelet, it only has the ones that I own because this as a whole gets to be a little discombobulating. So at the end of the day, I told you I would tell you what this area is. And this is the area right here. That is my wish list. So going on this cruise to Singapore, to Vietnam, all these places, this is the list of charms that I know exist. There might be others that are more exclusive that would replace some of these. Um, but if I'm going with a shopping list, this is my shopping list. Ideally, I would get two of these. Um, and if I'm going to place a priority on them, this guy top priority and then probably the rickshaw and then one of the dolls followed by the little Akita. So these two I, I know I could get later. These I love but they are not as high priority as the specific exclusives. So I hope that this helped and if you are going on a trip or if you're just trying to learn how to lay out um, different 
different bracelets when you're trying to decide, you know, what I have, what I want, that this is helpful to you. Um, if you want a full tutorial on how to lay these out, um, I can always give you a tutorial either in Illustrator or in Canva, which is of course a free option. So thanks so much for hanging out with me today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.